With all the things we all do online today, protecting you and your family's information and privacy isn't easy. Professor Robin Saunders, Director of Communication and Information Management Programs at Bay Path University, sat down with us to talk about this very modern problem. Well, and they, sh and they should be. When the internet was, was formed, um, privacy wasn't built, there, there was no privacy built into the internet. So now people's expectations have changed because they're using it so much. And in fact, what happened with this new law is the new law never went into effect. And internet service providers, as well as people like Google and Facebook and a lot of the other places that you visit on the internet, they, <coughs> instead of opting in and telling them that you don't want privacy opting out, you, don't, you, you want your privacy protected, the default is opting in. And that's exactly what happened with this law. You would have had to opt in to the, these, these internet service providers gathering all of this information on you. And now the default is you have to call them or find out where you can go to opt out of this because unless you make that effort, you're, uh, you are, you're complying with what they want you to do. I want to talk more about all of that, but let me ask you, as supporters of what Congress and the President have done, now negating this rule that was to take effect, mm -hmm. they say it's about fair treatment for ISPs because Google, Facebook, a lot of apps, a lot of websites, big web companies don't face the restrictions that would have been placed on the Internet service providers, the, the Comcasts, if you will, the, the phone companies, if you will, that provide Internet. And this is all about being fair and equal among the companies. What do you say to that? Well, if you notice, it was the FC, it's an FCC regulation, mm -hmm. and FCC controls things like the utility companies. And the Internet service providers come under FCC rules. P places like Google and Internet web applications come under the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC. So they basically do not have regulation that causes them to have their default be, I want to opt out of this. I, ba I basically want to keep my privacy. I don't want you following me. So that the Internet service provider said, this isn't fair. You are forcing us to upfront say to our customers, do you want to opt in or opt out? And do you allow us to collect this information or do you not? Um, and they thought that it was just an un unfair playing field. I know one of the big, big providers nationwide, Comcast, put out a statement saying, we have no plans. <laughs> I thought that was fascinating to sell our broadband customers individual web browsing history. No plans. That's not the same as saying we don't, we won't, we'll never sell what you have. That's gotten people worried, I think. Well, of course. And this is a money-making venture. All of those free sites that you go on to the Internet, you're really a product, not a person. They're free because they can accrue advertising dollars. They're free because they can sell the information about your trends, what you like on the internet, where you go on the internet, to attract advertisers to you so that it's something that you need to be aware of no matter where you go on the internet. We're really talking massive amounts of money potentially from advertisers wow. who want to know as much as they can about you and me and anybody who's browsing the net. That, that's very valuable information. Oh, absolutely. And, and the, the argument was, well, you know, people like to be targeted for advertising. They don't have to, they don't want to have to worry about, you know, seeing these ads that absolutely don't mean anything to them. But in fact, what's happening is that they are gathering a profile on you, where you visit what you do. On the way over here, I was obviously, I was looking at a lot of internet sites um, on internet security this week, and I am being tagged. My ISP is looking at me and saying, hey, you know, she's going to a lot of different sites that contain internet security. Um, maybe we should send her things about um, how to securely browse or, or products that will help her to become more secure on the internet. I think the problem is that people just don't realize that there really is no privacy on the internet. The only privacy on the, the uh, if, if you want to keep something private, the only place really to keep it is in your mind. If you start to share it with friends during a chat instead of going and talking to them, if you go on the internet and you start surfing the internet, you've got to really be very, very careful about the places that you go. 
You can initially look for sites that are more secure if you want to share less of your information, things that have either, either an HTTPS insignia, which is hypertext transfer protocol, sites that turn green that have that SSL certificate on them, um, those are more secure and try to encrypt your information. You could also, as, as, as we have discussed before, you can also download programs, browsers like Tor, or a virtual private network. And a virtual private network is something that allows you to basically go through the internet in an encrypted fashion in a tunnel, so that your internet service provider will actually will see you entering the virtual private network, but not see what you do inside of that because all of your activities are encrypted. The only problem is you've got to be able to select a virtual private network that is authentic, that is honest, and that has a privacy policy that you can say, hey, I don't want any of this information shared. The ones that tend to be free are the ones that you really should stay away from. Good virtual private networks you actually need to pay for. And I know you mentioned me particularly, and, and you talked about it a bit there, You've really got to know what you're doing. If you're getting into a VPN, a virtual private network, mm -hmm. you've you got to have some serious skills and, and savvy to get in there and, and, and not, not get the protection you're looking you for. You do, and most consumers aren't going to want to do that. Most consumers want to, they, they want to maintain their privacy, but they don't really know how to do it. Simple things like minimizing your footprint on the Internet, only go in the, on the internet if you absolutely have to. Don't fall prey to giving out additional information that you don't need to. There are so many places advertisers will send you things like a coupon. Mm -hmm. Click here for a coupon and we'll give you 20% off at a department store. And you click, oh, definitely, I shop at the department store. I'd love to do that. You click on that little link, and it sends you to a place and saying, I'm happy to give you that. Please provide your name, your address, your email account number, and all kinds of other things about you, sometimes a telephone number. You have then just provided all of this additional information on the Internet. If you use a free map application, free maps track you. They're designed to track you. You want to make sure that you really limit your footprint on the Internet. Be smart about things. Make sure that you, that you protect your information. And finally, it seems to me that if ISPs or anyone is collecting a lot of information, they're storing it somewhere, the danger of your information being hacked by who knows who, they're going to know that's an information-rich place they're going to go there, and you've got a potential real problem there. Oh, absolutely. And most of us have cloud accounts. And a cloud account is just that. It's a, it's a place on a, on, a, on a server where information is stored, and all of that can be hacked. You know, be smart about things. Really do look for the secure websites. If you look at that, the, the address bar on the top of your computer, you can see if it says HTTPS, mm -hmm. and you're looking for the S because that means it's a secure site. Look for that padlock. That padlock tells you that they have SSL or secure socket layer um, security that is, that is designed to authenticate that the site is legitimate. Look to see if the browser turns green, particularly on financial sites. One of the big discussions on the Internet this week because of the FCC rules was that they can share health information, they can share... Um, they can gather health information, they can gather financial information. Well, be assured that health information and financial information, there's a whole slew of laws that protects that. What they're really talking about are things like if I go and I want to search for uh, a treadmill or I want to search for high blood pressure medicine, that that kind of data is being collected on me, not what my um, if I put my weight in or I put my height in, obviously they'll be able to gather that kind of information, but not things about my personal medical history. And look at the privacy policies. Professor Robin Saunders, Bay Path University, thanks for coming in. Thank you very much.